Elsa says, I rate high on the agreeableness trait of the five personality traits. That being said, I feel like I lose all power around people who I view as superior to me, almost like I keep myself open and not closed off and strong. How do I combat this? Uh, I think you're judging yourself, just like we were speaking about before. You say that you rate high on agreeableness, right? And you say you feel like you lose all power around people who are superior to me. Okay, so first of all, that's not a fact. That's a feeling. And it's okay. It's great that you recognize that, right? It's not a fact. It's you're, you, you have a distortion in your mind. That's really what it is. A lot of our so-called feelings just come from distorted thinking, right? Where you now are making yourself lower than someone based on some judgment that you made about yourself and that person. So you say, I feel like I lose all power around people who are superior to me. My, the very first thing I would invite you to do is to not judge yourself. Just watch yourself. The key thing to do is to be a self-observer. That's how we evolve in life. That's how we grow up is by watching ourselves rather than having to change ourselves or chastise ourselves or to make ourselves into something that we're not notice. And have you ever heard that? I may have said it. Have you ever heard that, that, uh, awareness is transformative in and of itself, just by knowing things sometimes without feeling, without hangups, without judgment, just noticing it, right? Just notice. I have a friend that used to say that to, to me and to others a lot of times. He would say, hey, buddy, I just, I'm just going to invite you to notice this, right? I just want you to notice how when we're around Bob, you tend to uh, play, pick with pick your fingernails and kick the ground and look down all the time, right? He's not saying every time we're around Bob, you become a pussy. Every time we're around Bob, you have low self-esteem because you think Bob is superior than you. That's not what he says. He says, hey, I want you to notice every time we're around Bob, you kind of like stutter and like play with your fingernails, right? And then he'd say something like, well, what's that all about? And a lot of times it's a, it's merely a bad habit. It's merely a, a, a hair trigger reaction to something completely unconscious. And so the key to, to, to working with that information, working with that awareness is to simply stop. If you, if you catch your body doing something, it's very easy to just stop, right? So you say, I feel like I lose all power. Well, that's a mental construct. You made that up. What do you actually mean by losing all power? Do you stop breathing? Because if, you, if your breathing becomes shallow around these people, that means you're losing your power, right? Or that's your sense of losing your power. Because what power is a human body? Breath, right? So notice the actual thing that you're doing. This is really important in all aspects of our lives, which is to be very clear and to be very, very factual about what's going on. I was driving in the car with my daughter the other day. One of my daughters, she's just starting soccer practice, right? And, she, and so we've been taking her to the soccer practice. And of course, with little girls, it's a, more so than boys, but for everybody, of course, it's more social. It's like, who's nice? Is that girl nice? Is this girl nice? Is that person nice? And this person is not nice. And so we're driving in the car and she goes, you know, and I say, I'm telling you this because it's about judgment. Whether we're judging someone else, we're judging ourselves, right? And it really all boils down to ourselves when we're judging other people. So she goes, oh, this girl is not nice. So I say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't feel uh, comfortable around her. Like, well, what is it that she did that made it so that you're claiming that she's not nice and that you have bad feelings? And she got upset with me because, you know, she's a little girl. So she's like, well, I don't want to tell you anything anymore. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just trying to get clear so I understand what's actually going on, not what your perception is. Your perception and your feeling does not equate equate reality what actually happened and then she kind of calmed down and she's like well when i asked her for her help with how to kick this ball she she spoke to me uh in a condescending way and that's a judgment also so but she wasn't she wasn't explaining how to kick the ball in a nice way to me i was like well what exactly how did she say that I said, well, she, she, she said it like in a mocking way, like, duh, all you got to do is this, right? So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So let's back up now and get realistic about what happened. You wanted to, you asked her for her help kicking this ball and she 
she told you what to do, but it was in a way that you didn't like. That doesn't mean she's not a nice person. It doesn't mean that you uh, have to feel any particular way about her. It doesn't mean anything except the fact. She told you, in, in fact, if you just take things as they are and not judge based on people's tone, she didn't do anything wrong. She just told you asked her how to kick the ball and she told you how to kick the ball. What's the problem? Right? What's the problem? So anyway, that's kind of an example of what you're going through right now. You say, I feel like I lose all power around people. What does that actually mean that you lose all power? You got to check yourself out. You got to check yourself out and recognize what you're doing. Be clear about what that is and then make a decision on how you're going to act next time. Right? There are, there are times, I, I remember, I, I still am a jabba jaw. I just talk a lot, right? But, but you know, less so than when I was younger. And I remember when I was younger, whenever I was nervous around somebody that, you know, was of a higher status than me, right? Maybe older, maybe it was a teacher or a coach or it was somebody that I admired, right? I, I started to recognize that I would just talk incessantly. I would just start talking, 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 talking. And it was out of my nervous habit. And I started to notice that, you know, the, the other person would never get a word in and then they wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> right and then i'm like is that person a jerk <laughs> right i'm trying to blame that person why is that person why why wasn't he why won't he respond to me well the fact is that every time i'm around this person i keep talking and i'm talking fast so what i started to do was stop that stop that don't do that you're in that person keep your mouth shut listen more ask questions more just change the behavior that's getting you the result that you don't like. You're doing something, you're physically doing something is giving you a result that you don't like and you're judging the whole situation based on that, right? So he says, that being said, I feel like I lose power around people who I view as superior to me. He says, almost like I keep myself open and not closed off and strong. And that right there too kind of like confuses me. What do you mean you keep yourself open and not closed off and strong? Do you mean that you don't honor your own opinions about things when you're around people who are perceived as superior to you, right? Meaning like you're open to their influence rather than putting up boundaries and being, you know, fixed with your, your position and your, and, your, and your opinions, right? So with that, once again, just watching yourself and saying, wow, me being open to this person, is it serving me or not? Or am I just judging myself because I think I need to be closed off and strong? Because that's what it sounds like more to me than anything. It sounds like you're judging yourself because you think you need to be closed off and strong when really you may actually be more, it might be more resourceful for you to be open, right? This is where women get their power. I know a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the difference between masculine and feminine energy within an, an individual, right? So a man has masculine and feminine ways. Uh, not effeminate. I don't want everybody to get that mixed up. Men have f feminine attributes, which is right. There are some feminine attributes. Effeminacy is a totally different thing. And we'll get, go down that rabbit hole another time. But a feminine trait, right? A, a, for a man to be in a bit of a more passive or yielding position presents itself when you're listening, when you're listening. And it sounds like when you're around superior people, you what are you doing? You're keeping your ears open. That's a pretty good thing to do. It's a good idea that when you're around people that you view as superior to you, to keep your mouth shut and to listen. I had to learn that. I learned it the hard way. You're doing the right thing by keeping yourself open and listening. Now, when you say closed off and strong, now, if you have an opinion that goes against that person's opinion, you got to ask yourself, is it worthwhile for me in this context to open up and share my opinion? It might not even be worth it. You, it might be okay to let that person have a wrong opinion or have a different opinion and just be done with the conversation because I'm not trying to convince anybody, right? Maybe you don't need to convince him. But I was thinking about this the other day. What happens to people when they're in the military, right? Maybe you guys in the military, you can tell me. I thought about this earlier. I don't know why the thought came to me, but I was thinking about people in the military and like, if you're in a platoon, right? You got the platoon commander, right? You got the, the, the group. You got the commander, you got the guy that's in the head of that group, and then you got a bunch of other guys that are, you know, in ranking order, but subservient to that leader. And if you guys are out doing something and a mission or something like that, and the leader says, oh, we need to go to the top of this mountain. 
And one of the guys that's in the group is like, wait a second, we can't go to the top of that mountain because I remember going to the top of that mountain last time and we saw the, uh, the bad guys across there. We'll be, we'll be sniffed out immediately, right? But he's the only one that, that recognized that. And so he, now he has to contend with that leader. He has to say, wait a second, leader, I, I recognize your leadership. I recognize your authority, but I don't think it's a good idea for us to go up there and here's why. And in that case, he's going to have to be very convincing. He, he can't be a moody dude, right? Imagine he's just a moody. This is, this is now being effeminate. He recognizes, oh, shit, my commander's trying to take us somewhere that I don't think is good, right? An effeminate guy would pout or he'd fight or he'd argue or he would get emotional about it. But an alpha male in that situation would be rational. He'd say, hey, commander, um, I'd like to speak with you for a moment and then take him aside and lay out. You have to lay out everything. Last week when we went to the top of that mountain, I know you guys weren't looking, but I saw through the corner of my eye that there was a base over there. I didn't bring it to anybody's attention because I wasn't sure, but now since I know that that's the color of the enemy and their base was that color, if we go to the top of that mountain, we're gonna see that same, we're gonna see that same base and we could be attacked, right? Like take your time and play your cards right so you, have to, so you can explain to this guy who's your leader what needs to be done, right? I imagine that's the way it would, most resourcefully be done. And if that commander is, is, is privy, if that commander is open to it, he might say, okay, let's take our time and let's think this through. And instead of everybody going to the top of the mountain, he might send a spy. Okay, let's take the spy up there. The spy might go up there and say, oh no, that, there, there's actually no base over there. That was, a, that was an old blown up building. And then everybody can say, oh, okay, good. Well, thank you for sharing your opinion with me. We're gonna move forward anyway. Or the guy who was subservient might, be right. And the commander, if he's a smart commander, will say, thank you, Bob, for alerting us to this. I'm happy that we took your advice. You see what I'm saying? So it's just a matter of speaking up, but speaking in a resourceful way that allows people to want to listen to you, right? So maybe you do, I don't call it closed off and strong. I call it assertive, right? You say this, that you, you should be less open, or at least I think you're judging yourself. You should be less open and more closed off and strong. What I'm going to say to you is to remain open. Doesn't mean that you so, your mind is so open that your brain falls out, but listen, pay attention when you're around that person, be receptive because it's a very powerful thing to be receptive. I said earlier that women get their power from receptivity. Although they don't know that, they think they need to fight with men head to head. Women actually control men when they listen, when they, when they are yielding, right? There's power in yielding. I used to play this game, push hands with my brother. And, it, and the, the game would be where we're pushing each other, but the person who yielded at the right moment made the other person collapse. So if I'm being too aggressive, I'm trying to push and my brother yields, right? Boom, I fall on my floor, I fall on the floor. There's power to yielding. And you gotta know when to yield so that it puts momentum in your place. But you also need to practice being assertive. And there's a time and a place. that You don't always have to be assertive just for the sake of assertion. Right, just to prove yourself. Ah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna do this just because I want to be defiant. That's not, that's not an alpha way male way of doing it. The alpha male way to do it is to provide information. Right? Hey, uh, Mister Superior Guy, uh, I noticed when you said X Y Z that uh, I noticed that you said X Y Z. And I just wanted to introduce you to a, a brand new concept that I just came across. I was reading about it. It actually says ABC. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. And then you pass it to him and let him decide, right? It's one of the things that you want to do with people who are, you know, superior to you. It's like you give them an opportunity. You say, hey, take what, would you be willing to take a look at this? Right? And if he looks at it, like he said, the spy over the mountain, if he looks at it, he might realize, oh, wow, this is interesting. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Dakota, right? So that's it, man. It's not necessarily a matter of combating anything, but having a, a different perspective on how you approach these situations. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.